Hi everyone, welcome to the second meeting for the Building Dragons with Alternative Tools project. And on today's agenda, we're going to talk about um, the project plan. I think that's basically the only item in the agenda for now, unless uh, we have some other issues we want to talk about. So let's see. So let me share the document screen. Share screen. Okay. Share. Okay, guys, see. Okay. So, um, oh, we haven't did. Do, do you have like, um, I forgot to ask, did, did you share with us the project plans or do you uh, want to talk about regard, it? Regarding to the project plan, Chris, I was thinking that, uh, I, I, I have tried to, uh, put the things that I had on my proposal that I was, I, I, that were like good enough in my opinion, uh, and I was thinking can't just we use my proposal as the project plan for now because uh, it is really a, uh, you know, uh, uh, how you'll say it, it it is like a time taking process of okay. r uh, writing that same project plan on the wiki. So can we just for now use uh, my proposal? We can put that the link to my proposal on the wiki for now, uh, yeah. and use that as a project plan. I I can I can update my proposal uh, with that. Yep. And when, like, on some weekend when I'll have the energy to actually do that, I'll just put everything to the wiki. Would that be fine with you? Yeah, but do, do you want to walk us through what you have? And uh, let me let me let you share the screen first. So, uh, would you like to walk us through what you already have? So Chris, I think Vandit, I believe Chris's question was, do you want to walk us through uh, what we've already, what you've got? Because I think a, yeah. a discussion yeah. amongst the four of us of the existing plan is a really good idea. Yeah. Uh, should I just share my proposal for that? Yeah, yeah just share your screen and let's let's use that as a discussion. All right. Just a second. I think, uh, can you see, can you guys see my screen? Yep. Awesome. So, uh, what the, the first, uh, the first phase for the project would be restructuring the content because Entora uses a complete file structure, uh, then awestruck. So I have already, uh, on, on the, on the Jenkins doc, on the Jenkins hyphen doc, uh, repository. Uh, I have already like started the file structure like that. We can add more modules and just import the import the docs. Uh, that would that would uh, that would take maybe uh, around um, two weeks, I guess, uh, because uh, some fi some files would need to be changed according to the uh, uh, Entora structure. Like uh, Aus uh, in Ostruct, we we define some things uh, in the ad hoc file that is is not very really necessary in Entora. I have written that here somewhere. Yeah, conversion of files according to Entora. So, so Bandi, do you want do you want questions while we're here, or would you like to delay questions until later? It, no, you you can interrupt me while. Okay, so interrupt. so I see. So if you could scroll back up to the list of of sections that you've got enumerated there, so. User guide, I understand. That's the, the the what the thing calls the handbook. Developer guide, and, and that's the one that I could see absolutely needs to be versioned, right? So that's the one that's Antora fully versioned. Developer, developer guide. Developer guide would be unversioned, Mark. Oh, it user would be guide, unversioned. Uh, okay. Yeah, user guide will be versioned. Okay, and then contributor guide is one I I don't recognize that one. Is that a? Uh, a it was it was it i i, I sh it shouldn't be here it shouldn't be okay here. perfect yeah. that's it is just, it is just uh like uh to show what will be the structure. got it okay and solutions and tutorials i recognize and and i'm assuming tutorials 
we won't version and the solutions pages we definitely won't version is that is that assumption a safe assumption uh, it was not uh, written on the project page how if there will be versions on uh, versioned or not but i think they should be because tutorials must be versioned according to the version you will be used for jenkins and solutions should be also okay so uh, all right okay good good to know i'm given the low rate i guess th that's good to know because the solutions pages are quite low rate of change but you're right conceptually they could be very much version dependent good okay thank you thanks for the clarification we, we, we can start we can start the versioning from now on because like if what you said the solutions page are not uh that uh bulky but they should be versioned conceptually they should be versioned according to the jenkins uh uh, version you will you the uh, users are using so so then then maybe i should ask a different question should the developer guide be versioned as well that way uh, everything you've got here every guy every item you have here except root is versioned then a developer guide shouldn't be versioned because uh when a developer or a you can say a developer or contributor who will start contributing to Jenkins or who, who just want to use Jenkins API. He, he won't have access to the old versions of the API, I think. He, he would obviously uh, use the um, API, the latest APIs that we are using. So I don't think that should be version. That okay. is my opinion. Yeah. Thank you. That, uh, that seems reasonable to me. Thank you. Uh, moving on um yeah i don't think uh the con this file this conversion of files according to enter is the is a tedious task but i don't think it will i just have to remove some things uh from like uh from the top part of the page and it would be good to go uh i i uh nor uh this was uh, we in awestruck we use dot html dot html files as the template and uh and as a template to for other dot doc files uh in entora we we you and in entora we we use something similar that is called handlebar js which is a templating engine so we'll uh, i'll create i'll create a template file in handlebar js and we'll use that replacing dot html dot html and this this uh, this will reside in the jenkins ui project repository Okay. Is that is that clear to you, Mark? Yes. Oh, sorry, Chris. Chris is as lead on this. I should be a little more quiet. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. Go no. ahead. You can, you can ask questions. If you'll ask questions, then I, I we can get to things that maybe I could have done wrong or like assumed wrong. Uh, coming to the main problem uh, that I faced was that. Entora does not really provides anything for .yml files in our uh, that are in our code base, which are roadmaps and change logs. So I, uh, but Gatsby does. We can use Gatsby. We can use a Gatsby plugin that will use the .yml files as content source and generate that roadmap and change logs for us. I have provided the. Uh, I think I should share my complete screen. Just a minute. Yeah, uh, I, I have provided the link to the plugin. Okay. We will just use the, you'll use the content of the YML and the plugin will do most of the work. We don't have to do much for this. They have like written a really great instructions for that. Coming to... Yeah, header and footer from Jenkins.io components. Uh, this was something I figured out uh, during the application period. So the Jenkins the Jenkins hyphen Jenkins dash UI project already has header and footer from Jenkins.io Jenkins dash IO components repository. So that would be easy to implement because I've already done so. Uh, but what I what I noticed was using uh, header and footer from another repository might take some time from 
on a on a unstable internet connection but i don't i don't think we take that in account but yeah i i was thinking it would be awesome if we could like create create the header and footer from the u from the entora ui itself but that is just like uh we can do that but we don't have to so so the challenge if you create the header and footer from something other than jenkins io components is they will drift apart right because plugins.jenkins.io yeah. and yeah, stories.jenkins.io and several other x.jenkins.io prop locations use those that. components and you'll suffer drift so yep. you, but you say that you did implement something in antora that would use the the jenkins components i i implement i i just use the header and footer from jenkins io components repository so Good. we can okay. do that but uh, that, yeah like i said it is something we can do but it was open to what the mentors would say so that's i yeah i think i think after using that header and footer from jenkins.io com components would be nice for now because uh, plugins and stories already use that great thank you uh, well and is... updates and there are several locations it's it's far beyond plugins yeah, and stories yeah accounts.jenkins there are exactly. many exactly yeah yep yeah. uh, this is just the instru instruction how i will use that how i, how I implemented that we can ignore that. Uh, this this explains the versioning in Entora. So, Entora uses Entora.yml files as uh, in if uh, if we go here, yeah, in a root folder or like uh, any folder like this, the inner structure would be like this. We'll have an Entora.yml at the source root. This will have this will decide if the if this module would be uh versioned or not uh and this will be the entire file structure here the nav.adhoc is the sidebar nav that entora uses we'll have to we'll have to add uh hyper hyperlinks in here uh x xhref links for to creating the nav bar so that is also another tedious task for like you'll have to, I'll have to manually create manually create that. Uh, I, is that clear to everyone? Yep. It's too quiet. <laughs> so oh, so uh, yeah, great. If Chris Chris, uh, my comprehension wasn't full, but I'm okay accepting. Let's just keep going. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is how we'll implement versioning in user docs because that's the first milestone. Uh, so I'll I'll we'll create we'll create different uh, folders. We'll use folder folders as components uh, uh, in a single repository. This is a feature Entora provides. So our all our documentation would be divided in folders in directories, and these directories would contain modules and entora.yml. So the entora.yml of a uh, user docs will be versioned. So it will some look something like it will look something like this, with the version. And for the unversioned part, I'll just we'll, we'll just have to replace this with with this, and it will be no, a non version. Okay um uh, huh. uh also the versions would be on the uh, versions can be on uh, on tags or on different branches we can create we can create uh, a branch could we, we can create a branch namely uh, version 2.0 v 2.0 and we can create a, ver a branch version 2.1 and both will have different documentations but it will uh, on on our site it will we the user can select the version he wants to uh, you he wants to read documentation off. Okay. So, okay to ask for a pause here in terms of versions, Chris. I'm assuming that we want the version numbers to be most likely the LTS versions and only the the dot ones of the LTS versions, so that we would have a new tag every three months and a new a new but. Vandit, had you had you thought no, we'll be doing a tag every week, and therefore the weekly releases will get get documentation. Certainly, Git 
releases every three months and they version their documentation. I'm not sure of anybody who versions documentation weekly. Week, What's yeah, your experience? No, nobody uh, from uh, what I have seen that nobody actually change, uh, changes documentation to weekly and most of uh, like uh, the Entora Docs, Entora Docs site has uh, has documentation only for for the LTS versions they released. Oh, good. Okay, so, so there's so a pattern not, that. Yeah, they already follow a pattern. So we don't clutter. We don't clutter. Uh, we, uh, wait. Let me show you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, here. Um, just yeah. Here. They oh they oh they have they versioned they they versioned Entora Docs from three point zero and three point one, but if we if you had to do it on a weekly basis, it would be so clustered, it would be hard to use. It would uh, like spoil user experience in a way. Yeah. So I prefer that we only uh, only provide documentation for the LTS versions. Well, and and for for even more precision, the dot one of the LTS, you're okay with that. So it's every three months, yeah. every twelve weeks, not every four weeks. As as long as we can see that these are different versions, yeah. Right. So it would be two dot three eighty seven dot one, and next would be two dot four oh one dot one. Okay, yeah. got it. You can use the two point uh, two dot three and two point four. Yeah. Coming, uh, this uh, this was how we'll be implement an unversion, non-version docs with the tilde sign. I guess we call it tilde. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, Entora works on a, a feature uh, on a concept called start paths. Start paths are basically where will Entora start finding the docs from. So. The start paths are uh, written in the entora.yml's. Like uh, this, this is uh, this is how you will write the you the you we will write the sources, the content sources of our documentation, the URL of our repository, the start path. Start path. Since we have multiple, since we have multiple documentation, so we will have to write multiple start paths here. So th this was this will how it will look. Uh, this was an example part to the entora.yml and then the branches the, the branches is where i will write the versions like we can write version 2.1 uh version 2.2 this will this will then all these will have uh, the option that you can switch from version 2.1 and version 2.2 okay uh this was this was the uh, this this was the screen uh, like what I've created using Jenkins UI that it uses the Jenkins IO component footer. Uh, yeah, this that was for phase one and customizing UI, which is like the which is like the most important part of this project since we'll have to Jenkinsify everything. So uh, like I said, Entora uses handlebars JS for UI, and uh, it. We, in the they they uh, wait i'll show you comment here yeah this is the Gen this is the entora ui project it contains these it contains these partials these partials have uh, temp this these partials already have the base to start from so uh -huh. i think i'll first start uh, I'll I'll first see that what will be the files that I would have to change. What would I would actually have to change, or would the default or the out of the box uh, code would be fine or not? That would I would see that, and uh, after that, after that, I will I will start changing the CSS for each of the component to Jenkins file it uh, to Jenkins file it. Yeah. um the js is not much it 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 is it provides basic functionality that and uh, we don't have to change much in this from what i uh, what i have seen changing change if you have if we'll have to uh, uh, add a new functionality 
we can just uh, to the javascript of the site we can do that here we can add a new file to here but the uh, the the these files are great out of the box we can modify we can uh, we can definitely modify them according to our needs if okay. they change yeah Uh, uh, customizing the layout is all about the CSS part. So yeah, I just showed you. Uh, we'll have to. I'll have to change the CSS in the CSS folder for each of each of the. I uh, I I tried you. I tried using the existing CSS, but uh, you can say it is kind of a mess. Uh, on different screen sizes, on different screen sizes, it does not work really well. So I think. Uh, I I think we can we can you we can use this as a base as it is awesomely responsive respon uh, responsive uh, and work or uh, build on uh, build on that. Um, but we may we we may want like to put a lot more time into like do, doing this properly. Later. Yeah, this is yeah this is the most important part, and this will take the most time. Okay. Okay, and that's. And so the idea there is that the the net benefit of this is we will have a much more responsive experience yeah. for users at different sizes. It will yeah. certainly certainly cause changes, right? There will be changes as a result of that, but the 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 ultimate goal is a much more responsive layout as screen sizes change. Yeah, I I'll I'll try I'll try to I'll try that uh, the things that are already there don't break while change while Jenkins fi while Jenkins find the site, so yeah. We uh, that we'll build upon that. We'll see. I hope I don't break many things. Okay. Uh, th this this is uh hand this is uh this is how handlebars .js file looks. Uh, these are the you can you can consider them uh, as a, a partial as partials. Okay, so it's it's just so, template library. I I've, I think I've used it before. Oh, that's awesome! Then I think yeah, I I've, have. I've used it yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, these are partials, and uh, the these uh, these partials will be in the partials repository. Uh, these partials would be here. In the partials repository, and I I'll I'll change these to change the structure the layout of the the page. Okay. Yeah, but but Antora by Antora by default the structure Antora by default uses is much similar to uh of our Jenkins since they have their navbar on the side, and a table of contents on the right side of the screen and the main content on the mid in the middle. So I think it. I'll just have to tinker around with CSS a lot. This is the styling according to CSS pay uh, CS. Uh, I think I have like explained most of the stuff here okay. regarding that. Yeah, yeah, I have a question though. I have a question for you, but uh, you, you said like for 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 like the Jenkins stock repo, you take two weeks to do. But how about the uh, the the Jenkins uh, dash UI dash project? So yeah, how for, long do you plan to spend on? Yeah, I I I I can't actually like, I if we if we will if I'll have to say a number, I will say maybe around three weeks, considering if some uh, if I get stuck somewhere. It will take like three weeks to like completely custom completely customize the UI. Okay. But yeah, if things go well, it would it would take three weeks. Okay. Uh, to so three to four weeks. Yeah. Three to five weeks. Even, yeah, I think we sh I should add some buffer so if things yeah. go wrong. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good. Yep. Okay, moving on to the next part. Uh, Jenkins IO uses Algolia Doc Search for as a search engine on the on our site. So, uh, the Antora Antora provides the instructions on how to how to implement how to integrate Algolia to it. So, it would be just me following the instructions, the tutorial they provided. 
uh i would i would like to know how uh, they they have provided the docker solution but i from uh, uh, but i have re- i have read uh, algolia docs there are other ways, ways too but uh, uh i i would send this to the gitter channel so maybe the mentors can review it first before okay. i implement it yeah i'll send i'll send it now maybe acha yeah uh, or i i can add it to the me- uh, meeting minutes yeah where should yeah. i'll just add it here for now chris yeah sure yeah uh these are the footer and the header scripts that will be, that will that will be used while integrating algolia these were all provided here and uh, from what i have seen on other repositories yeah yeah Phase three is migrating blogs to Gatsby. So, uh, by default, Gatsby is normally used for dot m dot mdx files. Uh, but uh, we we or we, we have plugins that are you that we can use for dot adoc files dot for our skydoc. Uh, uh, we can. Uh, I thought we could like create another repo for blogs. So, since it is an expanding topic and blogs expand, so it would be nice. for to create another repo only for blogs but yeah that was uh, like mm, one of one, that was like we could we can do that but i would like to know your opinion maybe put like put everything together for now unless we need to split it off so we can do it later yeah yeah we can because uh, the di- i have what i have structured the directory like that so we could easily split it off if you in if in future we had to okay uh yeah uh we uh, gatsby pro gatsby provides uh, awesome starters so i i start i u- start i use this to uh, cre- the to create if uh, from if you ru- if you run the project uh, in the gats in the gatsby block test directory on jenkins talk uh, it would some it would look something like this uh nope not this um i guess they have changed it would look it would look something like um just a second okay is it due to block somewhere I remember Uh, so I think it's up top. Go back up top, like on the right side. See a block. Mm-hmm. Yeah, start. Yeah, that one. Yeah, start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've tried. I tried start. Uh, what I have created for my uh, POC was the default, default starter that, uh, I that I created from the CLI. So it looks different. I'll, I'll send it if I'll find it here or. From, it is in it is in the documentation i guess it is like the default starter yeah the, it is here okay yeah it looks it will look something like this for now uh with okay. yeah, jenkins logo here what i have created in my poc so okay. we, we it will we will we can have card we can have blogs as cards that yeah. we already have on jenkins.io yeah so, so yeah. um Just wanted to confirm with you. So we'll use Gatsby for the blog and also for change log. Anything else? No, no. We we only dot the the dot yeah YML files would be the only problem, for now. Yeah, from what I have seen, I don't think there is anything else that would won't work with Entora. Okay, I mean Gatsby. Yeah. So, so the we, just just to confirm then, Vandi, that means that the security advisories. will be will be done with antora because they're a doc uh no if yeah if they are a doc if 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 something is ad, if a doc it will be done with antora but Great. if something is dot yml it we, we we can't act we can't do it with antora from now because they don't even provide any plugin for dot yml source files okay so that's we would be the way for that thank you uh the steps i have written here uses the or uses the existing blog 
that that I can tweak with. Like I I can I can delete file, remove the unnecessary files that won't be necessary for uh Gatsby. But while I was doing that, I while I was actually doing that, uh many things were many things were unnecessarily breaking, and I couldn't figure it out. So I think I'll just copy paste the dot yml files. Yeah. Okay. Modifying won't work. Uh, so the uh, Gatsby is so easy to use. We can just we can just lay out the uh, layout. We can just customize the layout from uh, the source layout index dot js that is here. Um, yeah. This is the layout of. This will be the layout of our blog. Uh, I, I'm not I'm not very handy with React, but I think uh, I'll be able I'll be able to I'll be able to learn it on the go. So oh, yeah. uh, do, do we use our classes or do we use functional components? Or React in this case. I'm just wondering. Uh, I normal normally they are using components. Okay. So what what would be your preference, Chris? Because I am I, nowadays, like most people use functional components. That, that's what I'm asking. Because like I see like this one's uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they're using components. Functional components. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This uh, this this is this is if we were like, uh, if we were planning to use Gatsby for more ASCII doc pro, uh more ASCII doc, but I don't, but I think that's off the table. So this would be unnecessary now. Yeah, the integrate, the integration parts of the blog site, if they, both of them will be in the same uh, repository, uh, I will have to create, we'll have to create a setup file that will install the prerequisites, install into run Gatsby locally on someone's system and uh, changing, changing into correct repositories will build it. Okay. Uh, make file uses tasks uh, base tasks from I have worked a little bit uh, on on make files while contributing so I'll just set up ta I'll just have set up, I'll set up tasks for that okay cool. yeah uh, that was all uh, that was all okay so let me make a make file if there are any like doubts or cracks you you guys saw through please tell me the plan looks great to me thank you awesome this looks look great i mean i have one question like uh so you have like gatsby and one is antora so how we are syncing the design i mean we have like uh antora site uh, some css handle by this and uh gatsby we are making using some i mean react components so are we um, going to use the uh, different designs for both I mean fonts and all the so are we, how are you syncing it uh, I, I I'll have I'll have to I'll have to create components that that follow the current design of the blog site if you uh, if we go here uh, the just a minute where will when yeah here it is blog yeah we I'll, I'll we'll follow this design for now. Okay. okay. And no, since no. since since I I'll, I'll, I'll will also will also will also see uh, if we could increase the user experience in any way. Modifying so this design, but this. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah we'll see if we we can uh, modify the user experience in any way. But this will be the like the most urgent uh, design will be this. Okay, and the search will be also be there for blog uh, using uh, Algolia. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, so you're going to make a component out of it. Okay, uh, yeah. one more question. Like, uh, so uh, you are using that Antora thing, and we have docs uh, versioning thing. So we have like some 3.0 and 3.1, and 3.1 is the latest. So if some user uh, were going to use Jenkins, they Google a Jenkins docs. So will the 3.1 comes in the Google indexes? Like, the latest version should I want to I want latest version to come to the Google index. So how how, no, how no. will it, uh no 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 the the if someone searches for jenkins.io like the main site the main site will uh, pull up and uh, 
the user can see, the user will see a uh, drop down here somewhere here we, i'll have we'll have to see where we'll put the drop down most of the sites have it right uh, have it uh, on the right side of the search, uh, search bar uh, he mm -hmm. he would be able to he, he would end up on the latest uh, latest documentation site he would be able to if we if we have 3.0 and 3.1 and 3.2 he will see 3.2 out of the box and uh, he can switch but from from on google uh, it won't say on google or any browser it won't like he won't be able to see the versions when okay, so, on in the results sorry, sorry. yeah so if we search like uh, some user search jenkins github plugin a uh, gitlab plugin so some docs will come as a starting or maybe a second time or so when he click that uh, link it's going to show the latest version of that Git, yeah uh, yeah yeah okay he, so, he will always get the latest version first okay and uh, anything you had uh, so you say um, shared about Antora yaml file where we are going passing that configurations so are you passing any anything like seo related stuff like in front matter so maybe like uh, if i if i have a doc so i want that script i want to put description of that doc so that it increases the seo of that doc so where you're passing that in front matter like in mdx and all we pass in front matter something so like some description uh, of that uh, i i i i don't i don't i'm not very like handy with the front matter thing but when i was uh, i was uh, i don't think so and tora like provides any documentation related i would i would i would i would study about it and maybe then i would have i could answer your question like i yeah, don't yeah. know much about front matter now right now got it got it got it yeah yeah mark yeah, you have raised your hand yeah mark is raised um... so rajiv's question is excellent mine's a different question is everybody settled on uh, on the answer to rajiv's question yep okay then then mine is vandit could you open under the documentation link here go to Jenkins pipeline there's there's a piece of this now in the bottom left hand corner there's the pipeline steps reference yeah open that okay so this is is seems like a natural well it it's it should be non-versioned I think but it's a doc. And and this is where I guess I have to ask you the, do you have a, were you aware of this? If not, let's make you aware so that you understand how it's, so what this thing is, is there's a program that reads all the Jenkins plugins and extracts the help from them and then paste them, places them available as a doc source files that we use here. But these, it seems to me, it would be misleading to the user if these were versioned because the version number we would assign doesn't correlate with the plugin version from which we extracted the documentation. So Chris, could you pick one of those, one any one of those? Or no, sorry, Vandi, you're driving the screen. So pick any one of those. Um, password secrets. Perfect, sure. that's great. So when you click that, it takes us to this page that describes this pipeline step. But this pipeline step is not associated with a Jenkins version. It's with a plugin version. And so we, I don't think we want this page to be associated to a, a, a Jenkins version because, because we don't know what version the user has running. Now, if you'll underneath the, the heading one password secrets, there's a view this plugin on the plugin site. And on the plugin site, you'll see, oh, here's the, here is the actual version number of this plugin. I don't think we need to complicate that page by showing it to the, showing them 1.0 to the user, but it seem, it would seem poor experience if we misled them to thinking, oh, that plugin documentation is associated with 2.401.1 because that's not what it's associated with it's associated with version 1.0 is it feasible for you to do that as a non-versioned page yeah it is we can like i said we can, we would cre we can create a different directory for that and okay. that will be non-version great okay thank you that answered my question and thanks very much 
Yeah, I was not aware of this. I'll just save it somewhere. Yeah, well, and, and there's now. there's another generated page in the search. Could you look for the word in extensions? In extensions. No, just extensions. Oh yeah, ex that's perfect. In extensions is great as well. You see, there it is. Click that extensions at the very top. And now on this page, there's a link, second par paragraph from the bottom, the extensions index. This thing that we're going to see is another generated thing. And now, now, okay, now, Chris, you may have to help me with this one. This one is, so click on the topmost one, extension points defined in Jenkins core. This one actually is tied to a Jenkins version, but it's always the current version. Okay. So at this point, it's always weekly. And I'm not uh, sure that we want to version this. Yeah, it it is in it is in developer. It is it is like in the developer doc. So it won't be version. No, it will okay, be good. All right. So already covered. Thank you. Yeah. Excellent. Very good. I'll just see if the if the previous thing was no, it was no, it was in user handbook. I'll have to create a different directory for that. Yeah, it is already non-version, Mark. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks very much, Vandit. Um, yeah, any more questions? Like, throw them on me. That's all for me. Chris, you? Um, uh, do you have any questions about the pipeline stats documentation? Or you do, do you know how it works? Since Mark is here, you can ask him like questions. If you do you have like some doubts? Because like this this is quite like Yeah, the, like the content that you're that we see on screen right now, that content, the pipeline content or the is just part of the book and it should be a part of the handbook and it should be versioned. So this is a versioned page. And and it it, it, it is correctly a versioned page. Okay. The pipeline steps reference. If I remember correctly, the current generation process copies a big zip file in from another location, unpacks that zip file and uses it in the generation process. Now we could, I guess we could change that to do it some other way, version branches and versioning, but but right now it's just a big zip file of ADOCs that are generated by a separate process. Yeah, we, it's the only solution I can think of is we'll just create a different, we'll create a different directory only for this. Okay. Great. Yeah. And also we'll have to create a partial for this. So like for this page, because as it uh, unzips from a different location, it will be like, it won't, it won't be the normal, it, will, it won't be a normal template. It will have, I'll have, I'll write it. Well, and, and you should be aware of a, of a, go back to that page because you need to be aware of a very, very important feature of this page. Very important because we added it last year in Google Summer of Code 2022. In that filter steps field at the very top, type in the word checkout. So, so we can't lose what you just saw happen. <laughs> that, that, that yeah, shrinking. Don't oh, don't lose that. Yeah, that is something important for the user experience and yeah UI. Yeah, I well when when the the contributor last year did it, I was so delighted. I, it's hard for me to express how happy I was with this change because prior to this, it was a positively terrible experience to use this page because I would have to search with the web browser and it would jump all over. It would, this is a much, much better experience than we had 15 months ago. Awesome. I remember that. Okay. So um, I got a proposal. So since like we have 10 minutes left, uh, do you guys want to go through what um, Basel Quo has replied to email? Because mm. like, we got some feedback. Yes, yes. I think reading Basel's comments would be really good. 
yeah I, I i wanted to add something to that i i think from the the uh, the mail missed something really important i didn't mention that we'll use gatsby for uh, gatsby for blogs in there so i so should we like reply to that with that information oh uh, it should be okay but it's like do you want to take a look at um the email first together yes yeah let's let's use the 10 minutes we have to look at that email together in case there are other things the Gatsby for blogs, that seems like a pretty easy response. But other other parts of of Basel's comments may may be worth a conversation here. Yeah. So should I open it? Yes, yep. please. Yeah. Is it okay with you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you right. and you can. You don't even have to open it in mail if you want. You can open it in the Jenkins developers list. Oh, perfect. This is great. Uh, yeah. So we should go through paragraph by paragraph. Yeah. So uh, I think the... it is paragraph. Yep. Well, and and his first yeah. paragraph, I think, there matches with what you were saying, right? Yeah. His his first paragraph says. Yeah, for the change logs and user blog. documentation and dev documentation, we use Antora. For other things, for for blog change logs and other static content. We can use a different thing. Yeah. Okay. For the documentation portions of the site, Antora seems like a perfect fit because it is spe specifically designed for documentation sites and features first class support. For branching and version documentation, it's been working on Java platform support. Yeah, because Entora is a well-maintained project, so migrating to to that would like is like the great plan. Well, yeah. and and Entora intentionally supports version documentation sets, right? Whereas Gatsby does not seem to support it immediately out of the box. So, yeah, I, again, I think this is he's agreeing with with the direction your project plan is leading. Okay. Even with the even with the Roxy Docs team as also similar, guess we offer less support. Yeah. I, the only part, the only th thing I was I thought was missing is that I didn't actually like explicitly mention that we will use Gatsby for the blogs. Mm. Yeah, but he got it. Trust Entora was not designed for blogs. Yep, and the ratio makes it clear that maintainers. Yeah, they, they are, and the Dan Allen explicitly said Antora is only for version docs, not for blogs. Right. Yeah. Blogs don't need to be, I don't need to be versioned. Using Antora, Antora for anything other than a documentation site seems ill advised as this is not Antora. So it's in this use case. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, maintaining Gatsby. If we if we add plugin over plugin, the build time increases exponentially. Like okay. I read, I read in a blog that someone was using Gatsby and for like for two years, and he added so many plugins, his build time was around twelve minutes, which is a lot. So he migrated from it. Yeah, I I think we I think we we'll, we we should reply with the Gatsby will be used for blogs and for dot YML files. So Chris, would you do that, or do uh should I write? Uh, oh and, yeah, you should reply. I think you should be the person replying. Uh, okay, uh, I'll I have to reply to all, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, or just yeah, I, use the web page to reply. Inside the email message, you'll find a link to the Jenkins, uh, the, yeah, to the I, to the I posting. Yeah, I saw Google that Google. on this course. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll after this meeting, I'll reply to him. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Also, my exams are here, so I, I won't be able to do much work this week. Ten twenty-seven. No exams are first priority. They are number one. Yeah, uh, like what uh, John Mark said. Yeah. So we'll so we'll start we'll start uh from 
when the coding period starts we will start since my exams end on 27th in coding pe- uh, community morning ends on 28th i think yeah it it ends on 28th okay uh, i i i wanted to ask something from rajiv uh, yeah yeah my head yeah Hi, hi Rajiv. I I want like for your question was like really interesting. I I read about print matter somewhere when I when I was on Gatsby blog. So like, uh, could you explain uh, your question in like in more simple terms so I can search it up and so I can answer you later. Ah uh, yeah yeah. So we have like a doc file right, and in that yeah. we put all our contents. So at starting of that content, we write some uh metadata right name yeah, of yeah, that my- file. Yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, metadata is a front matter. So, are we going to pass the SEO related metadata uh, for that doc? Like or ad hoc some... files? Yeah, ad hoc file like tags or a description of that ad hoc file and those things, or maybe cover images like. Uh, the like uh adding cover adding cover Im- images on documentation i don't think that is like feasible since no no that, uh, that was just an example like i'm just oh, uh, adding the, some metadata mm-hmm. i i i what i what i think uh, if uh, like uh, currently we don't actually add any anyth- anything in the front matter for seo uh, like mm-hmm. uh, and and tora removes these things like from what i showed here uh and, and like the the file structure the file how the file looks it 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 just provides a description and the author according to uh, what our ASCII doc file yeah. should look like mm-hmm. if we are so, part, if we are yeah. using Entora so and uh, also since the ASCII doc files are so m- large in number adding SEO for each and every will be like a uh, humongous task uh, when the versioning will be there right then they are telling yeah a description and author would be there okay got it yeah yeah i'll read i'll read something more i'll read more about front matter so like i, I can understand it much correctly yeah yeah i, I got i got my answer right this is good right? yeah okay oh yeah uh should we talk about like uh ah, maybe maybe not not today but later should we talk about seo with it matters yeah i think we Imagine. we should have that conversation yeah maybe in the next week not not this week mm-hmm. uh yeah okay i'll read i'll read something i'll learn some things about seo till then yeah cuz like we have to we have to make, make plans about how to do things like how to continue the the the, the way things are done but uh using different tooling because if you're using Entor, things can be configured a bit differently from what they are now. Hmm. Yeah, I'll check in their documentations if they have written something about SEO, really, SEO there. Okay. And okay. this is like open-ended, like the design and the SEO related things are like open-ended. It will, will never complete. Like we will be again, again, revising those things and improving. Yeah, it. yeah. Hmm. So yeah, that's all from my side. Okay. Uh, anything from you, Yumi? Uh, I do have one question. So, in this project, will we make uh big changes in user interface? Because yeah, I I see in phase two we will uh, like uh customizing the UI or styling. Uh. Personally, I like more. I like I like modern you modern user experience and like UI. But I think the it would be correct if we start uh on the uh, if we first configure things and customize things how they are in Jenkins.io, and then maybe then maybe not maybe then we we then if we have time and I hope we have time, we can work on uh user experience and UI. Yeah, I, I understand. That be, yeah, that would be the correct course. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so my question is, uh, uh, so based on my understanding, this project is, uh, like, uh, the migration of the current Jenkins IO, 
because uh let me see so most of the parts will focus on will will be focused on the migration instead of the customizing the user interface so uh, it is just my personal experience yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think migrating first and then configuring the user experience would be the correct course so like we don't end up in a mess while uh, in, while improving things and migrating okay. yeah yeah that's my personal personal op opinions okay yeah. good good so any questions from you, Vendant? No, I think everything is clear. But what I was thinking since what today happened, I think we should like change our meetings to Saturday if that is possible for everyone. Because uh, from, from where I commute from my college, uh, around this time, there is so much traffic. Like I, 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 I had, yeah. What, what about Saturday? Oh, what about Sunday? What what time on Saturday? Oh, what? Uh, eight a uh a twenty to twenty IST on Saturday. Okay. Uh, it should work for me. But how about you guys? That that would work for me. So roughly this same time, uh, twenty four hours later. Yeah. yeah. That that would work for me. Just twenty five hours minutes. later. Okay. Yeah, fine for me. I'm okay with it. Awesome. Yeah, it works, works for me. Okay, good. So let's change it then. Okay, I'll, I'll update invite later. Okay, awesome. so thank you, everyone. So we'll see you next week or maybe uh, next Thursday. Yeah. Thursday. yeah. Okay, la last question. Will we will we uh, receive the updated your uh, the uh the time updating your uh email after this meeting. Yep, I will send out. Yeah, I'll sure. Update. Yep. Okay. Sure, sure. Understand. Okay. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. You. Bye, everyone.